97.9, KISS FM. Listen, it's Liz, and we are thinking pink all month long with Fred F. Collis and Sons here on KISS FM. And each week we are showcasing and talking to a different breast cancer survivor. And in studio, I am so excited to welcome Stacy Sardina Boysen. Good morning. How are you? Hello. How Thank you for doing? having me. Good. Uh, yeah? Doing good. So, so thankful that you wanted to be a part of this and uh, be a part of Think Pink. So I guess we'll just start at the beginning. When did your journey start? My journey started on November 7th of 2019. I went mm-hmm. for my uh, regular mammogram. And this particular year, I also had a sonogram with it. Mm-hmm. And... You know, when you see the tech keep going over the same spot over and over, you start to wonder, "Uh uh-oh, yeah, something's going on. Before I left that appointment, I was already told that I'm going to be scheduled for a biopsy. Oh. Um, So this was a Thursday. The following Tuesday, I went to my regular doctor, Mm -hmm. and I had the biopsy done. Two days later, I got the phone call. Yeah. It's cancer. (sighs) Yeah. You take a deep breath at that time. Um, I chose to not tell anybody at that point. And I didn't tell many people. Um, My aunt from Arizona was in town. Mm -hmm. I did not want to ruin the vacation by talking about me. Um, So the following week is when I finally told my brothers and told my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, And after that, I still kept it very quiet i i work in a local school Mm -hmm. and i i didn't want that to define me i wanted Mm -hmm. to keep working and just going through the motions and doing what i needed to do Um, my surgery was january 28th uh, in 2020 so there was a big uh lag in between that from november to january i Uh, changed my surgical team and that was part of the issue Mm -hmm. and then Christmas and vacations and And then just like yeah it it delayed everything so the date I was given was January 28th which happened to fall on my youngest daughter's 15th birthday oh Mm -hmm. so while I was in Syracuse having my surgery I uh made sure she was taken care of and remembered. Mm-hmm. I sent pizzas to her lunchtime oh. at school for her friends. Yeah. Uh, my Both my daughters, who are a year apart, uh, had all their friends wear pink in my honor. Oh. Um, and actually, on January 27th was the day I did announce to people at work mm. and to some family that I was having the surgery. Yeah. So not many people knew. Um it was the following week I had kept strong all the way through. And then the following week when I got that phone call that the cancer was found in my lymph node, my youngest daughter was my rock. She happened mm-hmm. to be there and I broke down. Did you? I did. I, I broke down. I, you know, you never think it's going to happen to you until it happens to you. Right. So it took me a few days to take it all in and then... I went back on track. Mm-hmm. I I tried to teach my kids, let's take everything one hurdle at a time. Yeah. So this was my, after I accepted my situation, mm-hmm. it was now to tackle the next hurdle. So fast forward to about March 10th, I now started my chemotherapy. And four days later, COVID hit and everything was shut down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. That's like, talk about going through it in general, but then doing it through a pandemic. Yes. And at the same time, my um, youngest daughter, we are now told she has to have hip surgery on both sides. She had rip labrums due Mm -hmm. to sports. And my husband, at the same time, uh, had a valve in his heart that he needed to have repaired. So yeah. we had all the all the things happening all, all at once. Stuff. All of you guys, yeah, okay. And with, and with COVID, so you yes. can't be around people. Uh, yes, right. You can't be around other <laughs> Except people for us. Yeah, right. So, uh, and again, we we went through it and we dealt with it one hurdle at a mm-hmm. time. You know, when my chemo finished, which was mid June, my husband went to have his heart surgery. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't be there, but. The support, we were there when he came home. Yeah. Then my daughter's hip first hip surgery was in July. 
Mm-hmm. Then I had my other surgery in July for my breast implants. Mm-hmm. And then my daughter had her other hip surgery the following <laughs> October. So it kept going on and on. Right. Um, but we all supported each other throughout this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, any cancer survivor would probably tell you you, you live with uh, a different quality of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, knock on wood, I am cancer free at this time, but I am constantly being seen by doctors, follow up appointments. Um, I am on an estrogen blocker, which my cancer was fed by. Mm-hmm. So you now live with the effects of having no estrogen being absorbed in your body. Yeah. Um, weight gain, trouble moving, mm-hmm. you know, chemo brain, mm-hmm. which is brain fog galore. Um, but, you know, thankfully that it was caught. Yeah. And that. I'm still here with my daughters, Mm -hmm. but it's the evolving quality of life that we just continue to flow with. Yeah. I mean, going through this and then also having daughters, I feel like that's like to have that, I guess, just to think about it, being the mother and having, you have how many daughters? Two. Two. Yeah. And they're 13 months apart. Yeah. So like to have, to have two daughters with you, like, was it this in your family at all? Not my immediate family. Yeah. I, I, I have a cousin who's uh, five years younger than me who is still dealing uh, with stage four cancer, but not in my immediate family. Mm-hmm. In my immediate family, uh, colon cancer yeah. is something that does run, but... But not breast cancer. No, I was, uh, did have the genetic test. Mm-hmm. Um, just talking with my doctors, we're thinking... I did, uh, when I, in my 20s, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, Mm -hmm. and luckily I was able to have my two girls, and then I was constantly having issues, so I had had a full hysterectomy, Mm -hmm. and I was on estrogen replacement, and I was on estrogen replacement for between seven and eight years, Mm. and talking to a few of the doctors, they're believing that's what fed Fed it? Fed the breast cancer, yes. Um, Mm. Studies at that time, um, when I started the replacement, was 10 years ago. And at that time, um, they were saying the estrogen replacement was safe. Mm -hmm. Now new studies have come out that no woman should be on an estrogen replacement for more than three years. And at this time, I was on it between seven and eight. Wow. So, yeah. And that, so yeah, that's like, and it's, and it's, you didn't know, we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. And um, one hurdle at a time, I guess, I think that that's really an important thing to, you take one thing at a time, you get that call, you get that diagnosis. Okay. Well. Next, what's my next move? Mm -hmm. And and you just, you keep going through it until you complete each step of the way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I chose to look at it. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, your daughters are lucky to have someone who's so strong mm-hmm. and do that mm-hmm. and show them along the way that, you know, it's 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 still not an easy thing, obviously, to go no, through. Right. No. And it's something that we're talking about it today because other people can relate to the story, can relate to feeling or maybe they just got diagnosed. They don't know how to feel. They don't know what to do. Um, and it's different for everybody. Some people want to tell everyone some people don't want to say anything at all it's just depending upon your life and how you want to go about it but like what's your biggest advice for someone my right biggest now? advice is when so when I was 35 I had felt the lump mm-hmm. in in my breast and I immediately went to the doctors is self-exam mm-hmm. that's the most important thing is self-exam and when you do hit the age that you're able to go for your mammograms every year mm-hmm. don't skip them mm-hmm. I went regularly. Yes. And I ended up having four tumors in my left breast. Wow. And that was picked up on the MRI. Mm -hmm. So I had gone the year before. Mm -hmm. We looked at both scans together. Nothing was on the scan the year before. Mm. So that's how quick you have to go every year to be checked out. It's a very important thing to make sure you're doing. And, um, you know, they obviously it's what age 40 is when they when they technically start. But they technically start at 40 unless there is a a history of it Mm -hmm. in your family. Um, And like I said, I found my own Mm -hmm. at 35 
it was benign, but then I started to go for a mammogram every year after that. Yeah. So it's just very important to make sure that you are checking yourself, you are being aware of it, and this month is the big month where we're talking about it strong. So we're thinking pink. Um, Stacey, thank you so much for wanting to do this. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is something that I I love doing and I love being able to um, share your story about why this is so important and how, you know, finding things early can help save women and and, and definitely be a part of this. So um, if you want to get more details about making strides against breast cancer is going down Sunday, October 23rd at MVCC in Utica. You know, it's a great way to fight against breast cancer. And um, Stacey, thank you so much. I can't thank thank you. you enough.